Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In the previous tutorial, you learned the basics of one-dimensional arrays. However, sometimes we want to store something more complex than just a single row of variables. And that's why we are gonna talk about multi-dimensional and jagged arrays in this tutorial. And I want to remind you that if you haven't watched the previous tutorial, you should definitely do so right now. Let's start with multi-dimensional arrays, specifically with two-dimensional arrays, because you rarely need more than two dimensions, and once you understand two-dimensional arrays, you will easily grasp three-dimensional ones. So creating a two-dimensional array is similar to creating a one-dimensional one, you just add a comma. What do I mean by that? Well, let's write the code and see. We're gonna be creating integer arrays, so int, two square brackets, and comma, and now comes the name of the array, so my array, equals new int, two square brackets, and the size or the length of the array, so two and three for this particular array. One comma means that we want to have a two-dimensional array. The first dimension will have a length of two, and the second dimension will be three elements long. This array can be viewed as a rectangular array of arrays, where the first array, which occupies the first dimension, holds two arrays, which are three elements long. If you don't understand that, do not worry, because I'm gonna explain it after we assign some values to this particular array. To assign some values, you need to access individual elements. And to do so, we need to specify the indexes for each dimension. And we can do it by writing the name of the array, then two curly braces, and two indexes. So, for example, zero and zero, and now we want to assign some value to this. So, for example, one. And this line of code assigns one to the first element in the first array when we try to look at this from the array of arrays terminology. And this line of code assigns 4 to the first element in the second array. Again, when looking at this from the array of arrays terminology. Cool! In addition to thinking about two-dimensional arrays as of array of arrays, you can think about it as of a rectangle which holds the elements. And the indexes are x and y coordinates. This particular array can be represented by this image. x-axis is the first index, while y-axis is represented by the second index. Some people like to look at this from the perspective of rows and columns, but I think that the viewpoint of coordinates is much better for understanding. And if you want to assign values to the array at the time of creating it, you can save yourself some time by using object initializer, similarly as with one-dimensional arrays. There's one difference though. The outer array, which we are accessing with the first index, doesn't actually hold any integers. It rather stores arrays, the second dimension. And it's those arrays in the second dimension which hold actual integers or obviously any other data type. I know that this probably sounds confusing, but just remember that you can think about it as of an array of arrays. Now let's finally use the object initializer. We are gonna create the exact same array as we did a little while ago. Int, square brackets and comma, name of the array, so this is gonna be my array too. And now we are gonna use the collection initializer, so two curly braces and then another pair of curly braces, because this is an array within an array, and we wanna put here one, two, and three. Now we wanna go outside the inner curly brace and put a comma over here, and then another pair of curly braces, this is the second inner array, in four, five, six. Awesome, so that's the collection initializer. And now comes the question. How can we use a for loop to write out all the values inside a two-dimensional array? Well, the answer is simple. We are not gonna use just one for loop, but we are gonna use two of them. Let's write it, and then I'm gonna explain. 
So 4 int i equals 0, i is less than my array dot get length, not length, but rather get length. I will explain in just a bit. And now put here a 0 and then i plus plus. And now comes the second for loop. So 4 int j equals 0, j is less than my array dot get length and now put one over here j plus plus and now we just want to console that right line and we want to write out my array i j cool so what's going on here the first for loop goes through the first dimension the number in the method call to get length specifies the dimension zero means the first dimension we can view the first dimension as the x-axis if we want to use the rectangle analogy. With each iteration of the first for loop, the second for loop is triggered. The second loop goes through the second dimension or the y-axis of the rectangle. The second dimension is specified by this one in the method call to get length. Now we have both i and j integers, which are like x and y coordinates in our rectangle, so we can use them to print to the console. And let's test this thing, so f5, and as you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so everything is nice and correct. And whoa, we've covered a lot of new stuff already, but there's still one thing missing. Up until now, we've been talking about rectangular two-dimensional arrays. What if we want to have a 2D array which does not have a perfect rectangular shape, like the one you can see on the screen right now? The answer is jagged arrays, which can be viewed as non-rectangular arrays of arrays. And how to create one, you ask? Well, let's do it first, and then we are gonna dissect it. So int and two square brackets we're gonna call this jagged equals new int and two square brackets again in the first square bracket over here we want to specify the size of the first dimension which is gonna be two in our case and now we want to initialize the elements inside the first dimension so jagged and only one square bracket zero equals new int and this is gonna be of size 3 and jagged 1 equals new int and this is gonna be of size 5 for example so it's pretty straightforward instead of a comma you just add another pair of square brackets notice though that in the first line we set only the size of the first dimension as the sizes of the let's call it child arrays can have various sizes Remember that jagged array does not need to be rectangular in shape, but obviously it can be if you really want it to. In the last two lines, we create the child arrays of the parent jagged two-dimensional array. Now it's the time when we specify their lengths, 3 and 5. Now to assign values to this jagged array, we will do similar things as with regular rectangular arrays, the difference being that we use two square brackets instead of a comma. And whoa, as you can see, that's pretty long and time consuming. Let's use the collection initializer again. We can use it on the child arrays like this, int jagged2 equals new int, and again two and nothing here, and now jagged zero equals new int one square bracket and collection initializer one two and three and similarly jagged one equals new int collection initializer and four five six and seven and eight or we can use a collection initializer directly from the declaration of the so-called parent array so again in jagged three equals new int and now we do not want to put anything inside these square brackets and now comes the collection initializer so curly braces and new int square brackets and we can actually copy this thing over here and replace the semicolon with a comma and now copy this thing over here paste it in here 
no comma but don't forget to put a semicolon after this second curly brace of the collection initializer. And now how do we write a for loop to print everything what a jagged array contains? Again the answer is writing two for loops with some minor changes in comparison to the regular rectangular arrays. So for int i equals 0 i is less than jagged dot length i plus plus and now comes the second for loop for int j equals 0 j is less than jagged i dot length i plus plus and now we want to print out to the console so console dot write line and we want to write out jagged i and j in the first loop we want to get the length of the parent array and in the second loop we are getting the length of the child arrays but now because each child array can have different length we cannot get the length for the entire second dimension we rather need to get it for each separate child array and because jagged array is an array of arrays we can get it by calling on the first dimension and we want to get the length property from it. Obviously we need to specify the index of the first dimension. While multidimensional rectangular arrays can be viewed as arrays of arrays for better understanding, jagged arrays are in fact really arrays of arrays, even when it comes to syntax. To add my two cents here, I like jagged arrays much more because they are more versatile and their syntax is used even in other languages such as C++. Alright, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to check out the exercise on resocoder.com by clicking on the link in the description. There will be a few questions and coding assignments which will make you learn so much more. I hope that this tutorial helped you and that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give this video a like and please also share it. If you have any suggestions or anything else to say, please leave a comment. Subscribe to this channel and even hit the bell button if you want to get notified about my new videos. Follow me on social media and see you in the next video.